please welcome the players onto court from England, Chloe Birch and Jenny Woolworth. And their Our fifth offering of the day then is the English players Chloe Birch and Jenny Walwork. Unseeded, they're up against Samantha Barning of Netherlands and Iris Tabeling as well. They're ranked 34th in the world and the English duo ranked 190th. So the script goes that the Dutch team should win this hands down. But we've an entirely unseeded semi-final field here in the women's doubles with the very bottom half of the draw. And uh, it's been a remarkable, the uh, second seeds, Golosowski and Carla Nelt were ousted last night by Woolworth, by Barning and Tabeling, I should say. But Chloe Birch and Jenny Woolwork also through in straight games. Remarkable, no seeds in the semi-finals. Top three teams were ousted all at the quarterfinal stage. The Stueva sisters, Oliver and Smith, and also Golatsuski and Karla Nelt. Uh, Jeff Usef has just been announced onto court two adjacent to this one. He's up against Kim Brun of Den Denmark. There are two Dutch players in purple warming up on the left side of the court and the two English girls warming up on the right side. So Chloe Birch of England aged 28, Jenny Walwork aged 20, ranked 190th in the world. There's their road to the semi-finals. And uh, you can see that the seeds, the fourth seeds, Bolotova and Kozitkaya, they withdrew. They didn't pitch up for the tournament. So uh, a bit of luck for the English duo. But they came through their other matches as well. So credit to them there. What are they doing, Gail, down at 190th in the world? You said you would explain it to me. I would explain. Right. So uh, Chloe Birch is one of our up and coming players in England. She's a talented singles player, but she's also very good at doubles. However, we have a shortage of girls, and that's the problem we have. And we know that we want to keep her in singles, and we also want to expose her to doubles, but it was finding the right person for her. So she's training at Loughborough, and someone came up with a great idea of calling Jenny Woolwork up. Because Jenny is a fantastic ladies doubles player, but she's been retired for a few years now. And it really was a sense of, Jenny, can you lend your experience, your knowledge, your being there, done that t-shirt to Chloe to help her become a better doubles player? And that's what's happened here. And the, and the great thing is they're doing really well. Jenny's loving being back on court. She's really loving playing with Chloe. And Chloe is just, she's growing and maturing as a player from, from playing with, with Jenny. So they have been as high as 114th in the world back in November 2014. They've only played three tournaments this year together. There's our uh, officials of this one. Fred Toss from Sweden and Jim Gould, the service judge. Yeah, for, for Jenny and Chloe, the world ranking's not so important. It's really about the experience for Chloe and just trying to help her become, you know, really, really all-rounded, great badminton player. And these two, the Dutch, yet to concede again. Fairly comfortable passage through to the semi-final. Good win in the last round over Golosowski and Carla Nelt. The second seeds ousted in straight games, 21-15, 21-10, in just 31 minutes. That a really good win for the Dutch. All right, Samantha Barning, Iris Tabling, the Netherlands. And on my left, Chloe Birch, Jenny Wallwork, England. It is traveling to serve to Chloe Birch. Love all. Play. Hey. Service over. One love.
is over. One all. interesting to see what this ladies doubles is going to turn out like all four girls are very physical they're very very strong so i'm expecting lots of smashing lots of drives The different physique is we've just seen Kirsty Gilmore um, and Anatia Madsen on course in the lady singles, and Just you see there, yeah, they're very slight um, with singles, it's all about the endurance, but with doubles, especially ladies doubles now, it's all about the power. Women's defenses are getting better and better. It's very common to see the girls practicing their defense against the guys' smashes. So when you come to ladies' doubles, it's extremely hard to smash through the defense. So now we are looking for girls that can really have got that power to get through any defense. Service over. Three, four. Service fault called. There's service a service fault for Jenny Woolwork. Yeah, she's made a couple of those already. Nervous start from her. The more experienced of the uh, English three. players. Yeah, it's, oh, it's so hard. I can't really tell. It's a very difficult. It's a very subjective hey! opinion. Well, we do know that the Dutch have Four, played 17 five. tournaments together this year. In contrast, wow. the English only three. So that's amazing, isn't it? They're ranked 34th as well, 26 years old, both of them. Well, there's also another Dutch Service pair over. that are very high in the world rankings in the top 10 of the world. So Six, for four. this Dutch pair, Rio is looking very unlikely. Um, but, you know, it's something for the future. They'll be looking at European Championships um, and the World Championships in Glasgow in a couple of years as well. Five. Just getting to terms with the drift, spilling well along there. They were winners in the Swiss International, the Dutch pairing. Quarterfinals of the Bitburger Open, third round of 16 appearances, but 11 first round losses this season. Service fault call. Service over. Seven, six. Ah, uh, Jenny's. She's, she's protesting that call from the umpire of the service fault. Like There's no way. Okay. Sooner, it's calling it quite late. So the rally's already started before it's calling it. Jenny, come here. Oh, Jenny's a Yorkshire lass. She's got uh, lots of fire. She does like a good argument on court. And if she believes she's right, and I think she's got a good case there. She's, she, she did adjust her serve. But of course, it's the uh, service judge's opinion. Well, at least that was the point uh, in which they could both sort of vent their grievance and get it all out. Plenty of smashes in that one. What was really like good for me to see is Chloe putting her singles skills into the doubles. We've got two Dutch girls. We've got a tall girl who is not going to be so quick to go to down for lunging. So it's really important to... to get those deceptive drops in against her. But also, you know, uh, another Dutch girl who doesn't look as physical that you could probably move her around the back of the courts. Again, in singles, that's what, what Chloe's very used to doing. So I really want to see her put 
her single style into this doubles and not get drawn into a, a very physical smash, smash, drive, drive game. Over. Hospital pass. Yeah. <laughs> Nine, eight. Yeah, for Chloe, this is not a good shot. And it's very easy to read. She's not using her body well for disguise. And again, this is where she can put her clears in, her punch clears. It doesn't always have to be attacking shots. You can use the clear as a, as a form of attack. Ten, eight. So the Dutch team then, three points ahead at the mid-game interval. Although it feels like it's kind of yo-yoing all over the place. <laughs> There's a few too many unforced errors in the end from the yes. English team. But there's unforced errors from both. Um, you know, this, the early stages, exchanges, they're not, these are two pairs that will not always produce consistent, perfect badminton. But when it's good, it's very, very good. But when it's not quite right, it will, it will be an unforced error. So it's going to be scrappy. Um, but with it, it's important when you're playing these Fourth games one. just to Wait try and second. relax. And for Wait me, I want to see the English girls relax and, and play the shuttle around, move it around, rather get drawn in, drawn in to a very, very drive and smash style of game. That's Andy Wood, um, someone I know very well. He was my coach for seven years, had to put up with me. That's why he's so grey. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. And with him is Mike Adams, uh, head coach of Loughborough University, where Chloe and Jenny train. Good performance set up in, in Badminton there. They've got great sports set up at Loughborough University for most sports, but really pushing their badminton as well. Big moment for these two. Show court. Judgment from Barney. Yeah, the drift. It's, they're, the English girls are playing into the drift, so that's going to drop in. It's not going to go out. Service fault call. Oh, no. Service over. 14 9. Well, it's Jenny, come here. become a thing Jenny. of real frustration for Jenny, <laughs> who just wants clarity. I think she does, and she's in a. She's in a horrible situation because if she flicks she's going to get faulted however if she doesn't flick the Dutch girls know that she won't flick because then she won't get faulted so they can pounce on that short serve so she's in a she's in a lose-lose situation at the moment she's got to be careful because if she keeps protesting like this she's going to get a card and it, the, the first warning is a yellow card See, I can't I don't know I can't call it it's really hard for me to to judge that. Well, you said, didn't you, earlier, it's subjective. I think you're absolutely right. You know, it's so tough to, to pick. But anyway, just got to flush that away from your mind and move on. Service over. 15, 10. So, the outright favourites then in terms of ranking, starting to accelerate away a little here. The Dutch. Yep. Yep. Oh. Well, you see that power and that strength. Iris Tubbling just stood her ground. She got her racket ready for that cross court shot.
Oh, great finish right up the middle of the two Dutch players, causing confusion. Well, it was all down to Barning. She was very, very lazy taking that shot on her backhand. Backhand clear, very, very weak. It was only reached midway on the other side, and that just gave Jenny Woolworth that chance to smash. Spirited defence from the English team. Starting to pull this one back a little. Still four points adrift. Oh, she's getting nervous pre-serve. No, it's because Barning moved. She okay. did it to put her off. Oh. Oh, not again. Service over. 17. Well, that's very disconcerting for her. Yeah. Well, the Dutch girl, Barning, put her off in the first sense. She was, I think she was all set to do a short serve, but then, unfortunately, when she went for the, uh, the flick. Well played, Jenny Walcock. Service over. Yeah, that's great play from her. She's a fantastic mixed doubles player as well. So she just used that quick reaction, stood her ground, just forced that mistake. Ah, the drift carried Ooh. it. But that was the right shot to do. That punch clear. So here, instead of that drop or, or smash, you can see tabling coming forward. Service over. That's unlucky, Chloe That's Birch. I thought she did really well in that rally, really well. She was, she caught coverage, was fantastic. 19, but just misjudged. So many have spilled over that back line as well, haven't they? It wasn't a, a, an awful decision, to be fair. Not far out. 20, game point, 14. The six game points then for the Dutch duo. World ranked 34th. Service over. And if you were to strip out the service faults, you'd have a very even contest in this game, wouldn't you? Yeah. I in fairness to the English uh, team. It's spilt long. That's a shame. Almost turned it around, but delight on the face of Barning and Tebeling. Very game to the good after just 14 minutes played. 21 15 they lead. First game won by Samantha Boring. Unlucky from Chloe, but she did everything right except for just that angle of that final shot. She needed to hit that down on the floor. But it was a very frantic game. <laughs> um, it was there was um, no soft shots or no turning of the shuttle or no taking the pace off. It was full out frantic <laughs> women's doubles. So I think Andy Wood would be trying to tell the English girls to just try and change the tactics of the game, just try and change the angles, change the pace of the shuttle, just mix it up a little bit, a bit of variety. The Dutch girls on the other side are they. They cover a lot of the court when you play in their comfort zone, but you've got to play up 
down, make them move more than what they are because at the moment these Dutch girls have got their position on court and they're, they're quite safe there. They don't have to do much. They're playing their shots, they're very confident, they're very aggressive. Um, so it's, it's, it's got to be that difference of, of variety and, and, and pace that is going to help this the English pair get, in, get back into this match. Wise words from Gail Ems. Alongside myself, Paul Hand. Delighted to be bringing you our last match of the day here in Glasgow. Women's double semi-final from the bottom half of the draw. What would he be scribbling, Gail? You know him well. I do. He writes He writes every single point down. Does he really? He does. Well. He takes exceptional notes. Second game. He has a Love big all. folder, <laughs> so he knows everything. <laughs> Nothing gets past him. That's a shame, almost a good dig from Chloe Birch there. You have a good drop shot. Use the drift, it's just going to stop in front of the English pair as well. Service over. Service over. There's so much pressure on your serve when your partner's serve is uh, under pressure as well. And poor Chloe Birch can't be can't afford to make mistakes when Jenny's up against the service judge. Bullied away through the net cord there. Wall work, terrific return. Ah, oh, the clear, just slightly overhit by Chloe. Well, this is all about experience as well because been in this situation you've got someone like uh, Barning coming forward to to anticipate the drop shot and it does put you under pressure it does it does scare you so for her just to be able to keep that cool calm style of play while while someone's coming you know at you and trying to trying to anticipate what you're going to do thunderous power from Chloe Birch there to level up at four all Nice combination from the English team. Subtlety and power. Great shot, trying Five, to make the Dutch four. girl move. Perfect placement into the corner. That's what they weren't doing in the first set, not opening the court up as much. It's quite a significant difference Six, in ends, isn't it, five. regarding the drift? And you can see how most players today have kind of wrestled in that regard. Mm. It's hard because you, do, you get frustrated as a player because you think, oh, I just want there to be no drift. Mm. But that's impossible. Yeah. When you're playing in any arena, there's going to be something. Seven, there's going to be five. some effect of the shuttle. It's very hard to have perfect conditions. But it, it, when you're talking to other players who are you know, up-and-coming players, 
it's important for them to realize it's the same for the opponents. It's not all you that's, that's in trouble with it. Your opponents will have exactly the same. Shame just coming uh, off the wrong side of a long, grueling rally then. And again, the Dutch duo just uh, turning the screw. Yeah, the Dutch pair are doing very well in, in rushing Chloe Birch. She's, she's not looking calm on that court. She's looking very agitated. And the, and the Dutch are just putting more and more pressure on her, making her rush her shots. Good leave. Service over. So they stay in touch then, just two points shy here. Oh. Terrific receive, really pounced on that. Over. Yeah, well, Jenny, Nine, they know six. Jenny's going to short serve. They, they know she can't flick. So all you have to do is just take that little step closer to that front of that line. And, you know, it's frustrating for Jenny, but for the Dutch, they've got to seize those opportunities. Ten, six. So 11-6 then, five points ahead for the Dutch team. Can't seem the English team to make inroads on the Dutch assault. But it's been a match played in good spirit. These two are elated with the missing <laughs> high five there. <laughs> what a wonderful <laughs> moment that was. <laughs> I bet they really appreciate us showing that again. <laughs> yes. We can't quite pick up what Andy Wood is saying, but there'll be wise words. Incredible coach. He's been through many Olympics with all the top GB players. Head GB coach. And, uh, now based in, in Derby University, University of Derby as well as Loughborough University. And just lending his expertise to these players. Play. It's a man for the serve. Yeah. Service Come over. Good turnaround in that point then. Seven, eleven. From Birch and Walwood. Gonna take a big test of character, a lot of attitude and application to swing this one all the way around. But whatever happens, it goes into the experience bank. Yeah, it's, I think this is really important to stress that it's very easy on paper for a top junior badminton player to make that step into senior badminton. And a lot of people will expect them just to adapt, no problem. And well, you were a good junior, therefore you'll be a good senior. And it doesn't Nine, always work like that. 11. And what's really good to see, and I think it's really important, is that the older players get a chance to play with the younger ones, just to, to give that advice and knowledge. And you know, some of the older players don't always want to because they've got their own agenda or they want to win this tournament. And they don't really want to give up their time to, to um, you know, play with a younger player. But well, it Nine. is so important for the development of the of the future players. Thunderous four consecutive heavy smashes from the English. Well, I've played Jenny many times, and I can assure you those smashes are very, very hard. For a female bouncer player, she was one of the top European players for power on that smash. Really, really thunderous when she gets behind that shuttle and uses every single bit of her body weight into that shot. Service over. 
is over. 13 10. Staying in touch here, just two points adrift. 11, 13. Well, Chloe Birch, she's been caught out with that well, drop shot from the, refer, from the rear of the court when Samantha Barning has crept forward and anticipated. But this time she, she just put a bit of a slice on it, just brought that shuttle down, which, which you know, caught Barning off guard. Longest rally of the match so far by quite a way as well. Just incredible rally. There was power, there was defence, counter-attack. Yeah, and it was a second opportunity for the English team to get uh, a run of three as well, and they couldn't quite manage it, but a really tightly contested point by all. Well, that rally is... That rally in ladies' doubles we've just seen is, is normal, typical in every single rally when we, we're looking at the top 10 ladies doubles pairs. Trying their utmost to turn this game around and detain the higher ranked Dutch duo to a third and decisive game. Oh, Jenny serve read over. that return of serve. She was in position. 15, it's just too much power on it. Oh. Well, Chloe's got great power, but these are the shots that she's got to be able to do under pressure. Those soft blocks. Service error. 17, 14. That's a shame because you feel these are pivotal moments in the context of this match. Jenny Warwick tried to change the pace there, change some angles, do some reverse slice drop shots, took the pace off her smash, and she thought that would entice uh, Tabling to, to hit the shuttle out, but unfortunately it didn't work. So the Dutch, two points away from the final after just 30 minutes played. Six match points for the Dutch. Well, 
Oh, great net shot from Chloe Birch. Took that shuttle really early. She had her rackets held high. Use that net cord. Net cord. So the win then for Barning and Tabling. They're through to the final. Delight for them. 21-15, 21-15 in just 31 minutes. Match one by Samantha Boring. It was a closely contested affair, but a fairly comfortable afternoon's work for the Dutch duo. They move onwards and upwards to the final tomorrow. So it's all smiles for them. Just confirmation of the score there. Fairly comfortable passage through, but... Uh, the English team, well, it all goes into the experience bank and they uh, fought their hearts out, out here on court one. And hopefully they can learn and move on from that loss. They've acquitted themselves very well all week. Semi-final appearance, fantastic for them. They'll gain more ranking points and lift that ranking from 190th upwards, no doubt. There's just confirmation then. Most consecutive points won by the Dutch as anticipated. Comfortably through then, 21-15, 21-15 overall. Let's hear from our winners with our own Gail Ems. Uh, Samantha and Iris, congratulations through to the final. Are you surprised to be in this position or did you expect that? Uh, well, we got the uh, hard draw, so every round was very tough for us. So we didn't expect to be in the final, but we played quite well this tournament, and we are very happy to be there tomorrow. That women's doubles was all about power. It was very, very fast. Um, you looked like you were enjoying it as well, though. Yeah, for sure. We knew they came with a lot of speed, so we knew we had to be ready on the on the hard flat ones. And uh, the point for us was to like get out of that, to play over or in front, and then when they come short, then we can pull through. But for sure, we enjoy every minute, and also we got yesterday through, and we didn't expect that at all. So every every match we win now is is, is one more that we expected. You're going to have to play the Japanese girls in the final. Different style of game. How are you going to go about that? Yeah, well, Japanese like to play really, really, really long matches, so we. We'll be ready to get on court for just uh, one hour or more. So we, uh, yeah, we have to keep patient tomorrow and then uh, keep focus. Well, congratulations for today, and we look forward to seeing you in the tomorrow in the final. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> so just confirmations then of uh, what we know so far. It's concluded from today's play, tomorrow's finals. Hans Christian Vatingas through. Kirsty Gilmore will face the fourth seed Lena Kirschfeldt of Denmark. And then, of course, Fuchsen Schuttler, who overcame Ellis and Langridge. Well, we'll await who they play. And there's the women's doubles final. Barning and Tabling through to fa face uh, the might of Japan, Fukushima and Hirota. And then Durkin and Vizlova of Russia. Well, they're in the mixed doubles final, but we don't yet know who they're going to play. So just confirmation then of who's up in the finals tomorrow. That concludes our action from uh, day four here in Glasgow. We'll uh, leave you with some highlights of today's matches. But for more information, go to bwf.com. From myself, Paul Hand and Gail Ems, it's goodbye for now. Please welcome the players onto court. The number five seeds from England, Andrew Ellis and Peter Mills. And their opponents from Poland, the number three seeds, Alan Salina and Bronislav Vaha.